I usually do. I get late with that record button. Today, we're going to talk about uh, train signals, the difference between speed signals and route signaling. So the halfway through, I have a little pop up that comes up that says, shall we continue? And so at that point, you guys can say, I'm burned out, I've had enough, maybe we should wait, you know, and we'll, we'll kind of take a show of hands at that point. I think most of you will want to continue. It's not th that brain, brain consuming. So with that said, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh -huh. All right, you got my desktop now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Great. Now, let me see if I can one more shot at this side by side. Nope, not going to work. So let me pop up my. There it is. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. You're on now. Good. Yep. Good colors. Let me back up here and get to the beginning. Okay, so let's uh, sit back, get comfortable, get your coffee pot, coffee, uh, cup, I should say, and let's head through this. All right, I didn't come up with this all by myself, of course. This is all Bruce Chubb's work. I, I bought his manuals. They weren't cheap, but they're very helpful. Okay, and this is volume two, his signaling systems. So I based all this on, on his material. So maybe I can save you from buying the book. All right, why speed limits? Well, I think we're all familiar with the basics of physics, right? You go too fast, you can't stop, you can't turn a corner, okay? All right, can your car maneuver around the city intersection at uh, highway speeds? And not safely, <laughs> let's put it that way. So setting a speed limit is a, a key element in using our, our signaling system. Okay, let me let Rick in there. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna talk about uh, what speeds the railroads use. Okay, and you, you'll find those speeds defined in their book of operating rules. So we'll get a, a quick review of of a generic book of operating rules, what it might look like. Maximum authorized speed. That's the highest speed authorized for a train on main track. Okay, norm, normally referred to as normal. Sometimes you'll hear it affectionately called high green. It's defined in the uh, timetable and typically covers large sections of main track, such as a division or a subdivision. So it's a mainline speed, okay? Maximum authorized speed is for mainline track. Typical values is 50 to 60 miles an hour for a freight train or up to 79 miles per hour for a passenger train. So we can cruise right along. Uh, it's sometimes reduced on the main track. Whoops, I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Maximum speed is effectively, yeah, I'm right, reduced by posting a speed limit sign. So on a main track, if you need to reduce the speed, you do it with a speed sign. And the operator or the engineer drops the speed to the to specified speed and holds that speed un until he sees a, a resume speed sign. Limited speed, it's a speed not to exceed 40 miles per hour. Some railroads use 45 miles per hour. So you're not allowed to go full speed, you're, you're at a limited speed. And then you have medium speed which is half of the maximum authorized speed, but not to exceed 30 miles per hour. Slow speed, is not to exceed 20 miles per hour, and often it's 15 miles per hour, depending again on the prototype. 
and what they elect, you know, they know their track and their situation. So they set their speeds accordingly. And then you have what's called a prescribed speed. Okay, this is not an actually uh, uh, defined speed, but it's, it's called prescribed speed because you have to go to the uh, operating manual and you have to look up what that means, what the prescribed speed is, okay? And it's used for going to a turnout or diverging route. And you'll see that come to, come to life here in a little bit as we talk about route signals. Limited speed, medium speed, and slow speed are movements through a diverging route. They're not really meant for mainline speed. Okay, that's, that's maximum speed, um, you know, the high signal, okay. It's also used when two main lines might cross each other or when a main line is passing into an interlocking plant. And we'll define what those are here in a minute. Yard speed, a speed that will permit stopping within one half of the range of vision of equipment or obstruction occupying the track. And also will permit stopping short of a switch that's not properly aligned. Looking out for broken rail and at no time exceeding 20 miles per hour. Long statement, but I think it's pretty clear. Does everybody kind of understand why it's half of the visual range? Okay, well, it's half the range of vision because if there's a train coming in the other direction, you both have to have time to stop. So you only have half the distance, half the visual distance to be able to stop. So when you're at yard speed, when you're looking ahead, you have to make sure you can stop in half the distance in case you're faced with an oncoming train. Yard speed is not related directly to a signal. It's a sign, okay? But it's a, it's a speed limit, so we need to talk a little bit about it. And there's one exception to the yard speed sign, and that's a first class train. There's usually a route through a yard that a first class train can maintain the normal speed. Uh, and it's everybody else's responsibility to clear that rail ahead of the approaching first class train. So a yard speed does have an override to it, right? For first class trains. Restricted speed. Now I'm not gonna read this definition again. You can see it's the same as yard speed. Exact same verbiage as in yard speed. but this time the speed limit is, is usually restricted down to 15 miles per hour. But it has a signal aspect, okay? So that's the difference between a, a yard speed and a restricted speed. They, they do the same thing, but one is displayed on a sign and the other is displayed as a signal aspect. Now let's look a little bit at the signals. And like it says, loosely speaking, okay, <laughs> it seems like everything else in life, you have the rule, but you always have the exceptions to the rule. So let's just talk in general terms here. Your prototype may do things slightly different. A full three-headed mast. The top head is clear. Okay, that, right, that's the main line. Sometimes the top head is also referred to as high speed. And then the middle head is referred to as medium. Sometimes it's also used to indicate a limited speed. And then the bottom head is slow speed and also used to, to express uh, limited speeds. High mast are used on the main line track. So here we see we have clear, medium and slow or you might say high, medium, and slow, okay? Or max speed for the high signal. Dwarf signals are usually slow speed, which are some type of a restriction, right? 
dwarf signals are used in yards, terminals, and some other places, depending on the on requirements. Sometimes they're used on elevated platforms where there's not a clearance or or something for a, a regular high high mast. So sometimes they'll mount a, a dwarf on, on a side of a bridge or something like that. But as a general rule, dwarfs are slow speed indications. Prototypical turnout speed chart. Okay, the left hand column, if you follow it down, goes five, six, seven, eight, all the way down to 20. That's the frog of the turnout. And then the right hand column is the speed, 12 all the way down to 46. And if you examine that, you'll see that the, the lower the number on the frog, the slower you have to go through it. This is just like how sharp is the cur curve that you're trying to take your car around. The sharper the curve, the slower the speed, right? The laws of physics. So uh, I'm gonna give you uh, three seconds to look at this chart and memorize it. It will be on the test at the end of the... <laughs> Just kidding, I wouldn't do that to you guys. This is the one that's going to be on the test. <laughs> Typical model turnout speed chart. So on here on the left, I do a comparison of the prototype to the model turnout. So let's look at the first one here, eight slash four. That means the prototype turnout has a frog of eight. We would represent that as a, a with a frog of four. And you would typically find that in tight yards and industrial tracks. And the speed limit is what, 10 miles per hour. It's a real sharp, tight corner. You have to, you have to take equipment across it very slow. And you can see as we go down, mainline track down all the way down there at the bottom. Typically it's a 20 for a prototype and a speed limit of 40, right? So you can see, generally speaking, you don't do max speed to any kind of a turnout, even on a main line. By the way, my little note at the bottom there, it says used in JMRI turnout table. So if, if you're a JMRI user and you're setting up your turnouts and everything to help control your signals, these are the um, typical speeds that it will ask you for and you would put in whatever your prototype uses. Speed summary. All prototypes have speed limits. Some railroads post them in their employee timetable. This is called routing signals. Some of them are put right on the signal. The speed is indicated as an aspect on the signal. This is called speed signaling. Now let's talk about the signals. Fundamentally, there are two types of signalings, right? Speed or routing. And they're used to control an interlocking plant. So what is an interlocking plant? Right? It's a railroad, it, the signal appliances and tracks are sometimes collectively referred to as an interlocking plant. And that's all the signals and the apparatus and equipment needed to control where, where a conflict between movement of trains may occur. So that could be a siding, that could be a, a union station, that could be two mainline tracks at a crossing. There's a conflict of interest there. So we use that as an interlocking plant. Okay, and below my note says, between interlocking plants, we use, if you're using signals, You'll use absolute permissive block signals or you'll use automatic block signals. Two different classifications, but totally a different subject. Save it for another day. So here we can see what an interlocking plant might look like. You can see I have a train on the left-hand side labeled A. As it's coming in here, there are many places in this example where you can see there's a conflicting interest. A train could be coming in from the right-hand side and the, the trains could be face-to-face. -face. 
So that situation is there. Uh, there's also the opportunity that somebody could be turning in from a secondary route. So this is a, definitely a place where you need to control traffic. Speed signal, signals define specific speeds that a train may travel through an interlocking plant. So the, the signal is actually telling the engineer, this is the authorized speed for the upcoming diverging route. Okay, route signaling simply tells the train you're going on a diverging route, okay, through this interlocking plant, but it's not gonna tell him what the speed is. It's his responsibility to look up the speed for that particular diverging frog and then to adjust his speed accordingly. But, it, but he has to have a chart or some way to look that speed up. So you can see there's a major distinction between the two methods. Speed signaling has that advantage, right? That it, the speed is directly given to the engineer. And while routing, you have to look it up. Speed signaling, because of the many more required aspects, is more complex than routing signaling. Route signaling uses much fewer aspects. Therefore, it's kind of easier to learn, okay? This is not only true for prototypes, but it's also true on our, on our model railroads. Speed signaling with its earlier implementation is normally used by Eastern railroads. And I'm not gonna try to read that whole list. Um, you'll get a copy of this video. You can pause it and see if you're on that list. While Western railroads usually use routing signals. Now, the best I can read out of, out of Bruce's manual is that this is because Railroads first came to the East Coast, the East side of our country. And they were first introduced on the East side. And by the time railroads started moving westward, they had developed a new method of signaling using route control, which is simpler and easier to implement. Cheaper, everybody loves cheap, right? So depending on where your prototype is, if you wanna follow your prototype, you this will help you to understand which, which one to select. Let's start now and look at some of the aspects of the signals. If you're using a full three head, you can display all 14 aspects of speed signaling. So immediately right now you got a clue. There's 14 different aspects we're gonna talk about here for speed signaling. If you're using a two head mast, you can display nine of the 14 aspects. A one head can only display the three aspects. If you got dwarf signals, a two headed dwarf can have 11 aspects. A one headed dwarf can show four aspects. And a good rule of thumb, good time to introduce it. If it ain't all red, it ain't red at all. It, I bring that up. It seems like most of us have a little bit of a working knowledge of signals and we understand this, that if you see a mast and all the signals on that mast are not red, it's not a stop signal. The red is a placeholder on a, on a mixed colored mast. If you see a red, like the one on the extreme left here, that three headed mast, that red on that three-headed mass simply means this is a placeholder. Ignore me. Pay attention to the other two color aspects on that mast. So the rule is if it ain't red, it ain't red at all. So let's go through the, the, uh, the basic signals here. The clear aspect, it's on a high signal. So it means proceed at authorized track speed. So you're on the main line. Then you have what's called a limited clear. 
Now you can see my example has it flashing and in a different location. I'm hoping that you can see from my example here, right? I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do with my illustrations is on the top here, if you can see my mouse, right? This is the previous one we just talked about, the clear signal with the solid green signal, right? That's full speed ahead, okay? A limited clear reduces your speed and it moves the clear signal from the top mast to the second middle mast. Okay, so you're not at, you're not at the full mainline signal head. You're at a restricted head, right? So we have a limited clear, which means 40 miles per hour. Notice that it blinks. This is important, okay? We're, we'll demonstrate that in just a second here, okay? So it's telling you here that you're probably going through an interlock, right, or a turnout, and that you're not allowed to, to go any faster than 40 miles an hour through this interlock. Fail safe and flashing aspects. We need to examine this a little bit closer. So let's take time and understand fail safe. Fail-safe and flashing aspects. You see, we have now the limited clear signal being uh, displayed. So that means what? 40 miles per hour. But it's important to know that a flashing aspect always indicates a less restrictive indication. And it's less restrictive because that flasher is subject to failure. So it could fail in a couple of different states, right? So we have, to, we have to understand why it's limited and less restrictive. If the flasher sticks on, right, then the, what happens? The green light becomes solid green and it becomes a much more restrictive signal. And we'll see that in just a second. If it fails in the off condition, what happens to the aspect? That head goes black, black or blank, right? And that's an invalid display. It should never have a, a head that shows nothing. It should always at least show red, which means ignore me, right? But if it's black or blank or off, then you have an invalid display. Rule 27 kicks in. So let's see what rule 27 says. A signal imperfectly displayed must be regarded as the most restrictive indication that can be given by that signal. So if we're looking at this signal, if that head goes blank, what's the most restrictive signal that it gives? Everything's red, right? So it says stop. Now, let's take a a look now at the more restrictive signal. So again, I'm showing you that we had the basic clear signal, then we had the limited clear, which has got the flashing green head on it. But if that flashing head, if the flasher sticks in, in the on condition, then we have what's called a medium clear. A solid green over a red is a, is a medium clear. And that's more restricted then a limited clear. And a medium clear means we can only go 30 miles per hour instead of the limited speed of 40 miles per hour. So that's what we get into when we're saying that it gives you the more restrictive aspect, okay? It just slows you down a little bit, but it, give, it makes sure that you're doing it at, at a safe speed. A slow clear. We move the green signal down ahead, don't we? Now we have it on the on the bottom head. And that simply means what? We can go through the interlock, okay? Remember it's on the bottom two heads. So it's a, it means we're going at a restrictive speed and we're going through an interlocking plant or at least a turnout, okay? And so it means we can go at the slow speed of 15 miles per hour. Approach, 
I think we all know what approach means, right? Approach means proceed prepared to stop the next signal. And probably all of us have at least been exposed to, to automatic block signals where you've seen the, the green head means clear, which is what? The next two blocks ahead of you are clear. There's no restriction in those two blocks. So you can go at authorized speed. And then you have the approach, which means there's one clear block ahead of you, but there's something in the second block. So you need to approach the next signal prepared to stop. And that's what this one means. And of course, then you have the red, which means stop. And it can mean two types. We'll get into that later. So here we have the, the typical approach means there you've got something ahead of you. So approach the next signal prepared to stop. Now it, it can be on the upper head, which is main line, right? But it can also be on the second head, which is uh, means you're going through an interlocking plant. So you, you're gonna be diverged, but you still have to approach the next signal prepared to stop. Approach limited. Okay, now, now we kind of mix things up. We start using that upper head again, okay? Which is giving us the aspect that says what? It says approach. The next head down now has what? A limited clear, okay? So we, we can uh, approach, but we have to approach the next signal at, at medium speed not to exceed 40 miles per hour. Now this isn't a, a diverging signal. This is on the main line. This says, all this says is approach the next signal at this speed. It doesn't tell you to stop or be prepared to stop. That's the distinction that you have to make between a basic approach and an approach limited. This one's just telling you that you should be at medium speed by the time you arrive at the next signal. Okay. So you might say it's an advanced warning. Approach medium. That's the much more restrictive fail safe signal again, right? So if that flasher locks up, you're gonna be given an approach limited I mean, an approach medium. Now, I need to stop and clarify a little bit here because I may be giving you a little bit of a, a wrong indication. Okay, approach limited and approach medium are both valid signals. Approach medium is not just there as a fail safe against approach limited. It can be used by itself. So it's possible you could come up on a signal, an advanced signal like this, and see a solid green light like this, approach medium. It doesn't mean that the signal has failed, okay? It is a valid signal aspect in and of itself. I hope that clarified more than confused. <laughs> Uh-oh, Scott, you're scratching your head. <laughs> Okay, so approach medium means 30 miles per hour. Okay, so approach, back up here and review just a little bit. Approach means approach prepared to stop. Approach limited means approach the next signal at limited speed, 40 miles per hour. But it says nothing about stopping. That brings us to the current approach medium which means approach the next signal at medium speed. But it doesn't say anything about stopping. It just tells you what speed to drop down to so that you're prepared at the next signal. Okay, you, you, um, you might say sometimes uh, uh, when you're driving your car, how many of you have seen the, the little flashing yellow lights on the side of the road that says signals ahead. 
right? Because sometimes there's obstructions or, or you know, things that, that you can't see, maybe a curve in the road and you're, you're doing a pretty good clip and you, and you might not have time to, to know about that signal to stop. So they give you that flashing sign at the side of the road. You can, you can think of the approach limited and the approach medium as that kind of a signal. It's simply telling you, hey, there's a signal ahead and I need you to slow down and be at this speed when you get to that signal. So now we're getting ready to move into the slow speeds. So we have approach slow. Pro pro pre pardon me. Pro proceed approaching the next signal, not exceeding slow speed. Notice the definition doesn't say stop. It just says approach the next signal at slow speed. So again, this is an advanced warning. Medium approach, medium. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll admit th this one got me, okay? This one is, is a little bit hard to, to get just from this uh, slide. So I'm gonna cover it, but I'm gonna let you know that I have an example of it coming up in a few slides down that will allow you to visualize this and you'll understand it a lot clearer. If, if you get confused on this definition, just kind of hang on to it. We'll see it again, okay? Medium approach, medium. Proceed at medium speed. That's what the green tells you, okay? Within the interlocking or through the turnouts, then approach the next signal at medium speed. It sounded like double talk to me, but what it means is you're getting ready to be diverted. That's why you're, you're dropped down your signals and you can, you're gonna be diverted at medium speed. But I need you to approach the next signal at medium speed as well, okay? So it's telling you what to do here and what to do at the next signal or what to be prepared for at the next signal, okay? So medium approach medium is a, a little bit hard to see off of this slide. We'll see it again. Limited approach, okay? Proceed at limited speed which is 40 miles per hour within the interlock, but be prepared to stop at the next signal. Now, I want you to notice one thing in the terminology of these signals that might help you. Look up here where I say medium approach medium. Okay, now, I want you to read that as just medium approach. Leave that last medium off. We talked about a medium approach and we said that was an advanced signal, right? That was, you're gonna approach the next signal. So when you see the term in front of the normal aspect, it means this is an advanced signal, okay? When you see it like it's here in the big bold limited approach, when you see it after the aspect, it's telling you the normal indication of, you know, this is what you would expect a, a normal approach to be telling you, okay? So hopefully you can maybe see that distinction a little bit. So since this, the word approach is after the limited, you're going to approach the next signal appear to stop, but, you can approach at a limited speed. You're gonna have enough time to slow down and stop if you're, if you're traveling at the limited speed. Medium approach. Again, this is what? Just a little bit more restrictive 
than the limited approach. The limited approach allowed you to proceed to the next signal prepared to stop at 40 miles per hour. The medium approach says you can proceed through the interlock at 30 miles per hour being prepared to stop. Okay. Are you, are you beginning to see a pattern to these? I hope so. Slow approach. Okay. Here we have flashing signal again. Okay. So this is a, a, a restricting speed, right? Proceed at 15 miles per hour through the interlock, approach the next signal, prepared to stop. Restricting, okay, this is the bottom yellow without the flashing. So it's, it's more restricting than the, the uh, whoops, on the last one I told you that it was a restricting, my mistake. That's a limiting signal, right? And this is the more restrictive restricting signal, which means proceed at the restricted speed, which may also be 15 miles per hour, but it may be different according to the rules in your book. Two kinds of stops, guys. Absolute stop and stay stop. There's two different ways of knowing this. One of the general rules is anywhere you see a mast with more than two heads on it, it's usually an absolute stop signal because two or more heads are used at an interlock where you have to have absolute control of who can go where. Often a single head is, is not an absolute stop. Sometimes a single head can be turned into an absolute stop by putting a sign on it, okay? The letter A means stop and stay stopped, okay? You, you're not authorized to proceed any way past that signal until a, a dispatcher tells you what to do or a signal tells you what to do. Permissive, stop and proceed at restrictive speed. On a single headed mast, that's denoted by, by a sign, usually with a mile marker on it, that, that tells you that it's permissive. Sometimes you may even see the letter P, it indicates that it's a permissive stop. So these are, are used usually outside of an interlock where uh, stopping and staying stopped on like on a main line would be too restrictive. So you, you have to come to a complete stop and wait, but then you can proceed at a restrictive speed. So it may slow you completely down for, until you get to the next signal, but at least it keeps you moving. Dwarf signals are always absolute. Now, I say that, but there's exceptions to the rules, guys. You know that. You have to know your prototype. If they've ever used it, and if it applies in the, in the section of the prototype that you're modeling. But we're going to leave it as the general term. Dwarf signals are our absolute stops. Movements to a diverging route. Now, we're really not going to learn any new aspects. We've seen them all, OK? But we're going to talk a little bit more about how we're going to see those same aspects used at the diverging route. So there are four basic ones that we use that are diverging route. Medium clear, which means you're diverging, but you can do it at what? 40 miles per hour. Limited clear, right? Medium approach, meaning you, you're going to diverge and you're going to stop, right? And limited approach, which means uh, you can approach it, but at a faster speed, but you still have to stop. So those are the four main ones that you'll see. And if you're modeling, 
speed signals. These may be the only four that you wish to use. You may not want to use the others. Why? Well, distance between our our turnouts, you know, on our main lines are much shorter than the main prototype. Our ability to stop a train in shorter distances means that we could probably cheat and get away of the advanced signals. That's, you know, the ones that say approach the next signal at this speed. We can eliminate those and, and focus mostly on these. So if you want, maybe you want to call it a poor man's uh, speed signaling, these may be the four that you choose to use. Let, let's take a look at these. Again, just to refresh you for the test, I put this little chart back up. So once again, you understand why do we use speed limits? We do it because of the severity of the turn that we're asking the train to make through a frog of, of a turnout. So again, the, the tighter the frog or the lower the number on the frog, the slower the speed. Okay. So this is the same chart we looked at earlier. I just put it up again as a reminder. This is why we're even bothering to do all this. Medium clear. Now, can uh, somebody speak up and let me know for sure? You can, can you see my mouse? Yes. Good. Okay, then over here on, on the uh, left-hand side, you can see I have a purple train. So I'm, I'm proceeding with the train from left-hand side of the screen to the right-hand side of the screen. So the first thing I hit is an approach medium. This is an advanced signal, right? And so what's approach medium telling me? It says uh, you need to approach the next signal at a medium speed. So as the train hit, sees that signal, he begins to slow down from, from uh, the clear or maximum routes as authorized speed to medium speed. So that when he arrives at this signal, he is at medium speed. So that he is at the proper speed because you can see this is now a medium clear indication. So that's telling him he's gonna be diverted, but he can go through that interlocking turnout at a medium speed. So the advanced signal let him slow down so that he was at the right speed to go through that interlocking turnout. And then he approaches, right? He'll follow the, the siding route and come down, he'll see his medium speed displayed on a two head signal. And he knows he's clear at medium speed to, to exit out. So that's how an approach medium and a medium cleared would be used together. Now, like I was telling you on our layouts, you might elect to leave that approach medium off and save a little money, a little wiring, it, right? And that would be sufficient for us because of the distances and, and the fact that we can stop our trains in, in much shorter distances if we needed to, to slow them down, okay? Medium clear would be used on a, on a frog, on a prototype, it would be used on a, a frog of 16. On our model, a frog of eight appropriate signal for a frog of eight would be a, a medium clear signal. So you can see he's coming into the interlock on a, a frog of eight and he's traveling through the interlock. And then here he's got a medium clear again, which means he's gonna go through the ex exiting interlock on a frog of eight as well. So he's safe to go through the whole interlock at medium speed, um, medium clear. Limited clear. This should look a little bit familiar. It looks just like the medium clear, except we got the flashing heads, okay? Which means the same thing, except we can do this now 
at a little bit faster speed. Why? As you can see, our frogs are 20 and a 10 on the entrance and the exit. So now we can go through this whole interlock at 40 miles per hour instead of medium clear, which is 30 miles per hour. Same principle involved, right? We get the advance warning here, limited approach, pardon me, right? The flashing, uh, we have a yellow over flashing green, limited approach, which slows us down so that when we hit this next signal for R, we're at the clear, limited clear speed. And then this signal says you're being diverted. 4R says you're being diverted at, at medium clear speed. And so you, you come in and you hit the next signal, which tells you continue at medium clear, I mean at limited clear speed. Sorry guys, mix my terms up again. So the, the same situation here, we're just being allowed to do it at a little faster rate. Medium approach. Again, the train is on the left-hand side, colored purple. The first signal we see is the approach medium, right? So that says, you're, I want you to approach the next signal at the medium speed. Doesn't say anything about stopping. It just says approach the next signal at medium speed. So the train begins to come down from its higher speed to a medium speed. Then it arrives at 4R and the, the aspect on that signal mass says medium approach. So now he knows he's gonna be diverted, right? At, at medium speed, which he should already be at, right? And But he should approach knowing he's got to stop at the next signal. So if you follow through here, right? I do the approach medium, I slow down, I read my speed here, I know I'm being diverted, so I divert and, and I know I have to prepare to stop at my next signal. Right, so, so I have a medium approach. Limited approach, exactly the same setup. The only difference is we're allowed to do it at 40 miles per hour instead of 30 miles per hour. So we won't, we won't uh, do a lot of detail on that. Just remember, right, this one preps you for your speed. This one, you should be at the prepared speed and know that you're being routed to the a diverging route and that you're gonna stop the next signal. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Those are the four that we just saw. Those are the four that you'll probably use on your, on your model if you're doing speed signals. Of course, there's nothing that says you can't use all of those, those signals. Approach, medium, approach. So here we have the train on the left-hand side again, purple in color. And the signal we see is yellow over green, which is an approach medium. It says approach the next signal at medium speed. So it's a warning, begin to slow down. Right. When you get to the uh, uh, interlocking signal, you see an approach, which is on the high head, which means you're staying on the main line, but you need to be prepared to stop at the next signal. So we're going from signal 245 to signal 4R, straight through turnout three to signal 8R to stop. So that's how you would read those heads. Now, remember I told you the one that, that looks odd, that's really hard to understand the language? For me it was anyway, maybe for some of you, you got it. I hope so. Medium approach medium. 
proceed at medium speed within the interlock or through the turnouts, then approach the next signal at medium speed. So let's see how that's going to work. Train A at 2.46 sees approach medium. So he knows he's supposed to be at the medium speed by the time he gets to the next signal. So when he gets to signal 4R, he should be at medium speed. 4R says medium approach medium. So you see the approach is in the medium speed slot. And the lower head says med green meaning medium. So you have approach me medium, medium, okay? So he comes into the turnout, comes through three, right? At medium speed. And he's to approach this signal here, 10R, at medium speed. 10R has what? A medium speed indication. So he's clear to finish his route to the interlock at medium speed. So this 4R is giving you two pieces of information. What to do at this turnout and what to expect at the next signal. You might not want to use that one on your layout. It's the only one that requires a three head mast. So if you want to save a little money and use only two head mast, you could eliminate that signal. Slow clear. Again, train A sees a yellow over yellow, which means approach slow. Doesn't say approach prepared to stop. It just says approach next signal at, at the slow speed. So when you hit 4R, you should be at the slow speed limit. 4R, 4R is telling you what? You're going to be sent to a diverging route at slow speed, at slow clear. So he can continue at his slow speed through that turnout and he can be routed in this case, it's going to be routed through three, through five, and out to signal uh, 276. Okay, a little bit different route, but same signal involved. Okay, so that's a, how you would set up for a slow clear. Restricting. Now, this isn't yard speed. Okay, this is restricting, and the difference is it's being shown on a signal aspect. So you're to proceed at a restricted speed. So here you have train A seeing signal 246 that says approach. Now, this is a little bit of a lie because approach means appro approach, but be prepared to stop, okay, at the next signal. So it slows you all the way down to the approach speed. When you get to 4R, you don't see a stop signal, but you do see a diverging route, right? And you're going to be diverted at the restricting speed, which is what? Usually 15 miles per hour. And you'll see this signal a lot. If we follow it through on the example, you see we go through turnout three, we come down and we go through turnout five. And then we see right here, we have a yard limit sign. So we're entering a yard, which means we're leaving signal territory. So you'll see a restricting indication whenever you're leaving signaled territory. Does that make sense? Questions? Wow, I'm great. <laughs> I'm a good instructor. Or I lost you so long ago, you forgot the questions. <laughs> All right, this is the end of uh, signal routing. So this is the point where I told you up front that I was gonna ask you, should we continue on? Into, yes. Okay.
All right, we'll continue on into route signaling. So shake it off, clear your head. What you've learned was signaling, uh, speed signaling. And we're gonna convert over now and talk about route signaling. There's uh, basically seven aspects to the basic signal group for route signaling. However, many prototypes expanded that basic route signaling to use flashing aspects. And then there's even a special circumstance that's covered where you use a three head mast. Route signaling uses generally a two head mast, which makes it cheaper than three headed mast. And with that three head mast, you can eliminate that special circumstance if you want to and do this whole signaling at, uh, with just a two headed mast. But for discussion to learn everything, we're gonna talk about a combined effort here. We're gonna show the basic and the expanded and the special circumstance. It's, it's really not that confusing. Probably if I hadn't told you that it was three classes, you would have just accepted it as route signaling and never known there was a distinction. It all depends on the type of mask that you see. So if you see a one headed mask, you can display seven aspects for route signaling. A two headed mask can show eight aspects. A two headed low can show eight aspects. A one head low or dwarf, right? can show five aspects. These are the masks that are used for your basic routing signals. And also, if you wanna use the flashing signals. Special circumstances is the only time that you'll use a three headed mast. Top head is for the main line. The bottom head is for the diverging route. Okay, so over here, you can see that we have a two headed gray mast. The top head is for the main line indication. The second head, the lower head is for the diverging route. Okay, the same is true on this special circumstance. The top head is main line, but the two bottom heads are for concerned with the diverging route. And we'll cover that secondary diverging route a little bit later. So clear, proceed at track speed. Okay, we would not learn anything new here. Green on the top head is max, max authorized speed for the main line. And another reminder, doesn't matter just because we changed from uh, speed signaling to route signaling, red heads still mean the same thing. If it ain't all red, it ain't red at all. So if there's other colors besides red, you have to pay attention to the uh, yellow or green aspects only. Diverging clear. Proceed at diverging route at prescribed speed through the turnout. Now notice there's no speed given here. The only thing you have are the words prescribed speed. That's because with route signaling, the engineer has to carry his book. It tells him about his route. It, 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 so he can look up the point where he's at in the route and know what the prescribed speed is for the turnout he's about to enter. So here he's just being told he, he's going to be diverted and then he can be diverted at the full prescribed speed, not, not at the max track speed, but at the full pres prescribed speed for that turnout. Approach diverging. Proceed approaching next signal, prepared to enter diverging route at prescribed speed. So this is again, an advanced signal. This is ahead of the turnout. 
And this is to allow the engineer to say, oh, I'm going to be diverted up ahead. I need to begin to slow down to the proper speed. So he gets up out his lookup table and he says, this is where I am on the route. At this turnout, this is the prescribed speed. Okay, so he looks at that prescribed speed and he begins to slow the train down to the, to the proper speed for that diverging route. Approach, on the top head, right? That means what? Prepare to stop. That's main line, okay? So you can approach and be prepared to stop the next signal. Again, we've, we've kind of all seen that on ABS signals. I, I, I make the assumption that all of us have kind of, kind of had a little exposure to ABS signals. Let me back up here. Approach diverging was flashing, right? I forgot to mention that. So approach diverging is is a div uh, not a restricted, a limited speed, right? So we had diverging clear. I'm backing up, guys. I got myself confused. Okay, diverging clear meant you can go at the fully prescribed speed. This means approach the next signal, prepare to enter at the prescribed speed. That's the advanced signal I was telling you about. It's flashing, okay? So it's telling you you're gonna do it, you have to do a limited speed coming into this upcoming turnout. Now, if that flasher failed, we get the approach signal, right? Approach prepared to stop the next signal. That's a lot more restrictive than the, the approach limited, but it is fail safe. At least you know you're gonna be slowed down enough to be able to stop until you can read that next signal. Great permissive, proceed at restricted speed. Okay, so here you see on, on the main head, we have a red signal but we have plates on it, okay? First, we have a, a number plate, which generally tells you this is a permissive stop, but it also has a grade sign on it, the G, which overrides the, the ability to have to come to a complete stop. So this is used like on a large grade for a mountain train or a hill where Maybe you're, you're pulling a, a coal train with a lot of weight, a lot of tonnage. So instead of making you come up to the signal and making a complete stop and then resuming at restricted speed, the grade sign says you can come up to this sign at this aspect, but you don't have to stop. You're permitted to pass it at restricted speed without making the stop. That, uh, saves a lot of fuel and a lot of time trying to get all that tonnage moving again, especially when you know you're going up a grade, takes a lot more energy, right? To move stuff up a hill. Diverging approach. Proceed on diverging route through turnouts at prescribed speed, approaching next signal, prepare to enter diverging route at prescribed speed. This is basically medium approach medium, as we saw in the speed signaling, right? It's telling you about two signals, right? Come to, the, come to this turnout, being prepared, being prepared to turn out at the prescribed speed. Again, it's not giving you a speed, it tells you to look it up. Okay, and approach the next signal prepared to diverge at that prescribed speed. Now, that sounds a little bit confusing, but what if you've got two turnouts that aren't the same frog? The first turnout might be, oh, let's say a number 10 frog. And the second turnout might be a number eight frog. 
Well, you can go through the first turnout at a faster speed than you're authorized to go through the second turnout, which requires a slower speed, right? So this advanced indication says, hey, you're getting ready to be diverted. Look up the speed for this signal and you can come through it at that prescribed speed I mean, it, for this turnout, and you can go through it at this prescribed speed, but know that you're going to be diverted to another turnout. Look up its prescribed speed. So now you kind of get advanced warning. Oh, I'm going to go through a tight turn, and I might be going through an even tighter turn, or I might be allowed to go a little bit faster on the next turnout. Okay, it can work either way, but it's giving you kind of an advance notice that you know, you're looking at not only this turnout, but you're looking at the next turnout. And here's the more restrictive speed, okay, diverging approach. Proceed on the diverging route through the turnout, but be prepared to stop at the next signal. Okay, and that's much more restrictive than the, you know, you can come through here but look ahead and, and be prepared to change your speed for the next turnout. Here it's saying, be prepared to stop. So the engineer knows um, to, to be, uh, you know, slow down enough that he could stop it if the situation requires it. Restricting. <clears throat> Proceed at the restricted speed. All right, what is restricting speed? 15 miles per hour. Where is it used? When you're leaving signal territory, generally, that's when you'll see it. Absolute stop, okay? Stop and stay stop. We went through this pretty much pretty good, right, on the, on the signal, speed signaling. So we're not gonna beat this horse to death. Two heads generally is always an absolute stop. Uh, one head has a sign on it, has a plate on it, right? And the A for stop and stay stop. Stop and proceed. Again, use generally outside of an interlocking, right? The, the advanced signals that you see, um, you know, the ones that tell you, be prepared, slow down, be prepared to be at this speed for the next signal. Those usually are plated signs that if they show red, you can go ahead and proceed past it because we don't want to hold you up on the main line, but you you know, you're at a restricted speed. So you're prepared to face any obstacle that may come up till the next signal is visible. Route signaling aspects. Let's take a look at a few examples. But I want to go over a couple of terminologies for you before we do. And these will be on the test. A home signal, shown here with the blue arrows, protects the entrance to an interlocking plant. Home signals are two or more heads, as illustrated here. And as I told you, Generally speaking, two or more heads means if it's got red over red, it means absolutely stop. You can't proceed until instructed by the signal. Distance signal controls the approach to a home signal. Now look here at signal 246. See how it's got the symbol for a plate? That's what I was telling you about. If this signal had a red, because it's got a, a plate on it, that means it's, it's a permissive signal. So you could sneak on past this signal at restricted speed in case there, you know, there's some kind of a signal fault or something. It, keep, it would keep you moving on the main line. And often these distance signals are actually a part of your ABS or your, or your AP absolute permissive block signal uh, scheme, okay? And not necessarily part of your interlock, but the interlock ties into it to control it. 
Home signals can also be a distance signal. Look, see here, 4R, even though it's a home signal, it becomes a distance signal to 8R because 8R may be showing you a red. If 8R is showing you a red signal, then 4R would show you uh, a, oh golly, I'll say it, I lost my term. Uh, yellow. Yeah, yellow, meaning what's, what's the aspect? Approach, there it is, right? Would It would give you a yellow over red, meaning approach, which means prepare to stop at the next signal. So you see that even though it's a home signal, it is a distance signal to 8R. So let's look at the first example here, a clear and approach. This is uh, something again, ABS signaling. Basically you've seen this on ABS and you understand what it means. So train A coming down the track sees uh, 246 is a clear signal. Clear means what? You're clean for two blocks ahead. There's nothing in your way. You can be at main, main track speed because you have two clear blocks ahead of you. So he comes through 246 and he sees 4R, which is yellow over red, which is approach. And approach means the next block is, you have one clear block in front of you to stop in, but the following block is occupied, has some restriction in it. So you begin the, your slow to slow down. And when you hit 8R, you have to stop. And you sit there stopped, okay? And since this is in the interlocking plant, it will have a, an absolute sign on it for stop. Does that make sense? That one's really fairly straightforward. No yeah. speeds, no speeds involved there, right? Just instructions about the track. A foggy day. Okay, you guys can inter interact here a little bit. Okay, this is open for discussion now. Okay, on a foggy day, which means what? It's gonna have, we're gonna have trouble seeing our signals down the, down the track. Okay, so on a nice foggy day, what should the aspect be on signal 378, right? If, if 4R has a red over yellow, which means what? You're gonna be taking a diverging route, okay? So you're coming up, you're gonna be diverted. But if you're sitting here on the main line and you're, you've been following green signals, what speed are you at? Are you at? Your maximum. No. It, yeah, you're at maximum speed, okay? So if, if you don't, see these signals in times, if you get the 4R at maximum speed, what's likely to happen when you hit turnout number five? You know, you're likely to have a derailment, right? Yeah. You're, you're asking too much of the equipment for that track, okay? So we need to slow this guy down for this diverging route. So what should this aspect have? Would it, would it take, have a green signal? Yellow. Wouldn't it be a flashing green to reduce the speed to half the line? Okay, flashing green is used in speed signaling. That's right, speed signaling. Yellow. It could be a yellow for approach, and what's that mean? You prepared to stop. But you need to be running at reduced speed. Okay, uh, a yellow means what? Approach. And, uh, the approach aspect says be prepared to stop at the next signal, right? So that's by far much safer than a clear signal, okay? But it really slows him down, okay? To where he, he we'll lose a little time. So maybe there's something better we could do there. How about approach, diverge, diver, approach diverging, okay? So we're gonna give him an advance warning Okay, that he's going to be diverted. And what's that do? That gives him time 
to look up the speed he should be going at for the for the upcoming turnout okay because he knows where he's at on his route so he he says oh i'm about to be diverted this is where i am on my route and that turnout is a number 12 which means i can go at 35 miles per hour so he slows himself down so that he's prepared to take that turnout at, at the most efficient speed so that he keeps that mainline traffic moving. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here we can see it illustrated. Approach diversion and diverging clear. So train A is coming up on 246 and he sees the flashing yellow light, which tells him he's about to to be diverted onto another route. And so it gives him time. He looks up his route, finds out what speed he should be at. He begins to bring his train under control and drop his speed. Then as he comes up on the uh, 4R, he sees that he's at diverging clear, which means he's allowed to go at the prescribed full speed for that turnout, okay? Now, it doesn't mean full track speed, right? Because these signals don't give speed. They just tell him about the route. So he's allowed to go at full permitted speed through that route, but he has to look it up. So he's coming through turnout three, rounding the bend here at five, right? It comes up on 8R, which gives him a grain, which means he's, he's clear, okay? And he can continue on through turnout seven through that interlock. Approach diverging and diverging approach. This is the one that kind of has that double meaning. And, okay, so train A, Sees 246, says, oh, I'm about to be diverted. Looks up his speed in the table. Brings his train under control. When he gets to this 4R, he says, okay, I'm being diverted, but I'm not being diverted clear. I'm being diverted approach. Okay. So he has, he knows he's going to be routed to a second turnout. So if we, if we look here, he's routed. He can be routed two ways, can he? Here at turnout five, he could be routed to 8R or he could be routed down to 276. So this is that special circumstance, right? The two-headed one just gives him advance warning to say, hey, look it up in your table. Right? No, you're going to go through this turnout three, and no, you're going to go through turnout five. Be prepared with two speeds in your head. Okay, so you know what you're doing. But instead of 4R being a two head, we could replace it with a three headed signal. Okay, now if we put this three headed signal, red over yellow over red, that would say that he's going to be diverted to the first secondary route. So he's gonna come in through three, five would, about him, would divert him to signal eight RB, okay? But if that signal showed red over red over yellow, then he's gonna be diverted to the secondary route, which means he'd come through turnout three turn out five and would come down to signal 276. Okay. So if you got if you got that kind of a setup, you could use a three-headed mast. Or you could just, you know, stay on the on the cheap side and you just use the two-headed mast and know, oh I'm 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 about to approach two turnouts. So I have to be prepared. One may be tighter than the other. So I have to know what the second speed is to be prepared for it. 
Does that help? Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good. This is being recorded. And of course, I'll post it on YouTube. And that means you can go back and review it and study it, pause it, you know, replay it. That's the advantage of that, being able to replay that stuff. Because I, I know, I sure didn't learn it by reading it the first time. <laughs> I've definitely had, had to go back and restudy it. Approach diverging and diverging approach diverging. All these flashing lights. What's the difference here? Can anybody tell me the difference between this and what we just looked at? Uh, you're able to look up the speed for that and, and go at the higher speed to be more efficient instead of being limited at your speed on the approach. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So that, that means exactly the same thing as this, except you get to go at a little bit faster speeds. Okay. Approach and restricting. Somebody tell me what this means. You would be able to look at the restricted speed for that is like 15 miles per hour, right? Normal if it was solid red, but if it's restricted like that, it might be a posted speed for that. Would that be the difference? Uh, now the, the restricted speed is defined in your book as restricted speed. Okay. You're going to come into the yard, so you have to use your yard speed with it. Now you're, now you're beginning to hit on it, Don. What it's telling you is that you're going to be diverted, and you're probably going to be diverted into non-signaled territory. Okay. And so it says, slow down to restricted speed until you know what you're doing and, you know, in this case, you're right, I do have him going to turn out three, through turn out five, and hitting the yard limit sign, right? And so yards are, are not signal territories. Okay, so he would hit the yard at restricted speed. When he saw the yard sign, then he would do whatever the yard speed limit is, which is usually the same as restricted speed. Okay, but it may be different depending on the yard. Are typically signaled for exits from yards? Um, yard, when you, when you exit a yard, it depends, right? If you're entering signal territory, you'll pick up a signal that tells you what to do. Okay, and you know, of course you'll hit the yard limit sign you know, that tells you you're leaving the yard and then you'll pick up a signal that tells you what you're doing. You know, either, either a route or a speed signal that tells you what you should do. All right, so we talked about all this in, in general terms. We didn't pick out any particular railroad and, and model it. We just talked about the generals, general meaning of the terms. So if you're gonna model it, pick out what you're gonna use, speed or routing. And then you're gonna to have to go to your prototype and you're gonna to have to get their operating department book of rules for the period that you're modeling. And then you follow whatever's in that book to, to set up your speed signals or your routing signals, okay? And then of course you have to train your operators how to interpret those signals. But the advantage is once you actually have it on your model, you're learning a specific signal aspect and what it means for your railroad, okay? And, and so then you, you put that to memory and you, then you can get confused when you come to my layout. <laughs> and I use a different signaling system. <laughs> I'll have to teach you mine too, okay? But that's that's one of the fun things, right? Going sharing, you get to learn each other's layout too. 
Do I have any questions? Yes, I imagine that the wiring is complex because you're going to have to do it in blocks that are aware of the signal signs on the previous block. So I can see that diagram getting pretty complex pretty quickly for your layout. Uh, you, you know, it, uh, it used to be extremely difficult because you had to use hard wiring and relays and timing relays, you know, delay, and you had to use mechanical flashers. It used to be extremely difficult to wire in a signaling system. But since the computers come along, it has really lightened that load considerably. And then you add on top of it programs like JMRI. Uh, if, if you haven't figured it out, I like JMRI. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but if you, if you layer JMRI on top of it, and you tell JMRI, you can actually develop your whole signaling system in JMRI without ever putting a real signal on your layout. So you can say, hmm, which do I want to use? And what do I want to use? You know, do I want to use all the aspects or just a, a portion of them? And then you can go into JMRI and you can put in what they call virtual signals which means it's, it's not a real signal. It only exists in the computer. And so you can put a virtual signal in and then where you want your signals to be. And then you can, when you start up JMRI, JMRI will automatically read those signals, read your block detectors and all the information that's, that you've given it. And it will set up the signals for you. You don't even have to write a, a, a line of logic, okay? So nice. JMRI does a lot for you, okay? Now, it, it also gives you the ability to customize because you know how it is, there's those general rules and you put them out there and the signals work fine, but even the prototype said, that's not going to work here. You know, we, we need a special signal to cover this circumstance. JMRI even gives you a way to go in and say, override that and do this instead. So it, it's that complete a signaling system. Okay. And you don't even have to do the graphics for your signals. So if, if you uh, say you do UP, Right, and UP uses a certain signal mass style, right? And uh, JMRI already has those graphics already developed. You just tell me, I'm going to do a UP layout. And it says, okay, these are the signals you want to use. So it even gives you the right uh, icons to put on the screen. So you can set it all up and you can run virtual trains through your your JMRI layout and test it. And if it does what you want, then you can go wire it. But because it's through a computer, you're gonna turn on uh, uh, inputs and outputs instead of having relays out there to wire up. Really, really simplifies it, guys. And so if, if you've been wanting signals, but they seem too complex for you, Right, study a little bit in JMRI. It's JMRI is is like AutoCAD. Okay, <laughs> it it's complex, you know, and it will do things for an architect, and it'll do things for an electrical engineer, you know. It, it's a diverse program, and, and therefore you you, you kind of have to learn how to how to use it, how to pick out the parts that are important to you and stay focused on those. If not, you can go down a rabbit hole real quick. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, you know, you, you really need to stay focused. And I love this, type, this stuff, okay? And I'm available as a resource. And I know there's plenty other guys out there besides me that, that love this. So we're in this together. This is the benefit of us all coming together like this, right? We get introduced, we say, hey, that's not as bad as I thought. Jim will help me. Let's go for it. Let's, let's get in there and go for it. 
So, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. The thing is, you don't have to implement the full system at once either. You can say, okay, I'm just going to automate this interlock. And once I interlock that and I know how to control it, you know how that fog disappears, right? Once you've done it, the next time it's a little easier. And then you all of a sudden you begin to understand, oh, that interlock is totally separate than this interlock. And that one is separate from this one. Right, and I, all they are are little islands, and all I have to do is understand each little island. There's, there's not a whole big interlock, right? And I say that, and then I'm going to tell you we layer that. Okay, <laughs> we can layer that, and we can put CTC on top of it, centralized traffic control. And now what do we do? We bring those controls for those signals back to a centralized computer screen, or you can build knob and, you know, uh, toggle switches, whatever you want it. As, and you can set a dispatcher back there and you can run your trains via a dispatcher. So there, there's all kinds of layers that you can put this stuff on, okay? On top of everything that we've just learned here today, JMRI also supports what's called model train signaling. Model train signaling means you put signals around your turnouts and the signals reflect the state of your turnout, okay? Which is probably all you need to know for, you know, to get by on modeling because things are close enough together and everything. That may be all you want. I just want to know the state of my turnouts as I'm approaching. So that as I'm coming down at, at, at clear speed, whoops, I've got a signal, ahead, you know, a turnout ahead of me that's thrown wrong and I can reach up and throw that switch before my train gets to it. Okay. And that maybe that's all you want. And JMRI does that perfectly well. Okay. So there, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Use part of it, implement it all, um, your choice. Again, I hope this was helpful for you. Any more questions? Okay, guys, that, that really wraps up the official portion of what I had to present. So. Um, Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate that uh, in-depth explanation. It was, uh, I'm glad to read through this more than once, but uh, I got uh, broken in pretty good today. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's, that's great. And again, I'm here. Email, telephone, you know, I, I do wiring diagrams. I've, I've sent uh, a couple of the guys wiring diagrams and they're actually doing the, the physical wiring. They just needed the, how do I wire it then? Okay. So I'm glad to work with you on that too. Okay. And Tom, I'm also glad you found your uh, profile background. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. I'm going to stop the recording of this. If I can find my pause, stop.